So WWDC 2025 has just begun and there's now a whole bunch of brand new news and features for Mac gaming that have just been announced. And these include the announcement of the brand new Mac operating system, a dedicated Mac gaming launcher, huge improvements to the Metal HUD performance overlay, a whole host of new Mac games that have now been announced, as well as huge improvements to the Metal Graphics API and of course, game porting toolkit, allowing Windows games to work on Apple Silicon Macs better than ever. So in this video today, I'm gonna to be introducing you to all of these brand new features and telling you what this means for Mac gaming's future. But before we continue, a quick word from today's sponsor, Private Internet Access, the VPN I personally use and trust. Whether you're researching games, downloading emulators, or just exploring what your Mac is truly capable of, your internet activity is exposed to your ISP, advertisers, and potentially worse. Private Internet Access protects you by hiding your IP and encrypting your connection. It's like creating a secure tunnel between you and the internet. Private Internet Access has a strict no logs policy. That means they don't track, store, or sell any of your data. This has been verified multiple times in court and by independent audits. And it's not just for your Mac. It'll also work on Windows, iOS, Linux, and you can protect unlimited devices with a single account. I've got it running on everything in my house. And especially when you're downloading files from the internet, even legal ones, it's important to protect yourself. A VPN like Private Internet Access helps you stay anonymous and avoid unnecessary risks. It also helps you bypass region locks, which is super useful, not just for games, but also for streaming services, deals, and even online game store pricing. Private internet access has servers in more than 91 countries and 50 states, so you can access more content than ever anywhere in the world. Head to the link at the top of the video description or the pinned comment to get 83% off, plus four extra months for free. That's only $2.03 per month, and it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So thank you very much for Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the main content. So the first big announcement is the fact that we now have a new version of macOS that's been announced, macOS Tahoe. And of course, one of the things that's a little bit unexpected about this updated version is the number. And yes, we've actually skipped straight from macOS 15 to macOS 26, bringing this in line with the rest of the Apple products with a new year numbering system. Now, there is a whole range of new updates for macOS Tahoe, including the liquid glass user interface, plus a whole load of Apple intelligent enhancements. So I won't go into too much detail about this, but you are gonna to need to update to macOS Tahoe if you wanna use the next gaming related feature. And that is Apple's brand new dedicated games launcher, simply called Game. Games. So I think the main benefit of using this app versus the App Store is the fact that you can see all of your App Store games in one place. It's not cluttered by other apps. The way that Mac games are shown and advertised is substantially better than on the Bear App Store. And also one of the very cool features is that you can use this launcher to directly invite other players to play multiplayer Mac games together. Next, we can see pretty huge improvements with the Metal HUD. So now we have a performance overlay, which is a little bit more transparent and the font is a little bit clearer and more spaced out. And now you have a lot more granular control over how much detail you wanna see on your Metal HUD. You can just have an FPS only, or you can have more details shown on screen, depending on how much you actually want to know about how the game is performing on your Mac. Next, we have a whole bunch of native Mac games being announced. So yes, there are a few games that were announced last year which haven't come out yet, but we have a whole bunch which are coming out over the next year. And the new announcements for today include The Blueprints, Hitman World of Assassination. Several of these games are lower profile indie games. Also, we had the surprise announcement of the Inzoi Mac port. This is gonna be coming out natively to Apple Silicon Macs on August 20th this year. And we also got a whole bunch of new footage of Crimson Desert, probably the next big AAA game to be announced for macOS, which will get a simultaneous release later in 2025. Next up, there is a brand new game overlay. So this allows you to use a controller and make changes to things like sound, brightness, adjust the controller profile, change the energy saving profile, and also toggle game mode on and off. And you can also invite people directly from the game itself, helping to round out a bunch of quality of life improvements for gaming on a Mac. 
Next, we have the release of Metal 4. And this is the latest version of Apple's proprietary graphics API with a bunch of brand new features, including neural rendering, which combines traditional graphics with machine learning. And you can now run inference networks directly into shaders to compute lighting materials and geometry, enabling highly realistic graphics. And in addition to Metal FX upscaling, as well as denoising, we also have the ability to do frame interpolation, which is basically frame generation. This allows the Mac to interpolate a frame between two existing input frames, creating high frame rates and smoother gameplay. Here, Apple are showing off the future Cyberpunk 2077 native Mac port, which unfortunately hasn't released yet, but is taking advantage of this brand new feature, increasing the frame rate from about 37, bringing it up to a solid 60 FPS. Unfortunately, we didn't get any news of when this highly anticipated Mac port is going to come out, but we are assured it's coming soon. And lastly, we're looking at the highly anticipated release of Game Porting Toolkit 3.0 Beta 1. And of course, this bundles D3D Metal, the Windows DirectX 12 to Metal Graphics API translation layer to run on a Mac in conjunction with the software crossover. So at first glance, it does appear with my first benchmark that I did that there is an improvement between D3D Metal 2.1 and 3.01 Beta. I ran the benchmark at the same settings on the same computer, resulting in a very modest bump in performance. Once I have a little bit more time, I'd like to do a deeper dive and test a few more games. And there are also some really interesting features which I haven't managed to test yet, including the ability for Metal Effects to hook into NVIDIA's DLSS. And this involves dropping in the correct NVIDIA DLLs into the appropriate position in Crossover's bottle, theoretically enabling Metal FX on all DLSS enabled games, which would likely give better performance than AMD's FSR. And Apple haven't just made Game Porting Toolkit for gamers to play Windows games on their Mac. They've also improved the various developer tools and helped streamline workflows. And they say that CD Projekt Red, who are in the middle of their Cyberpunk 2077 port for Mac, made use of other tools like the Metal Shader Converter, making the porting process much more simple. And you can now also make use of Mac remote developer tools for Windows, allowing you to debug the game from a Windows-based workflow using a remote Mac. So anyway, those are the big Mac gaming announcements from WWDC 2025. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments. Make sure to tune in really soon because I'm going to be doing some heavy duty testing of Game Porting Toolkit 3.0 on beta. And if you do want to test out macOS Tahoe beta yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for my previous tutorial on how to dual boot beta operating systems so that you don't affect your main system drive data. And also I'll be making tutorials on how to get Game Porting Toolkit 3.01 working in crossover in the very near future. If you'd like to me to test out any particular game then make sure to catch me on my live stream as well so i'll be taking requests for windows games to test out on the new game porting toolkit as well as figuring out the dlss to metal fx hooks anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video